first alert. This is a live look right now at the ruins along the Israel-Gaza border. Right now, the IDF is pushing deeper into Hamas-controlled territory. Meanwhile, overnight, Israeli forces killed the commander who directed portions of the major attacks on October 7th. Meanwhile, the IDF is hunting down Hamas targets inside their 300-mile tunnel network. Yep, Trey Yinks is live on the ground in southern Israel with the latest. Trey. Yeah, hey guys, good morning. I do want to start with some breaking news. Two separate times this morning, there have been suspected drone infiltrations into Israeli airspace in the southern part of the country. Israeli media is reporting these were drones likely fired by Houthi rebels in Yemen that came toward Israel through the Red Sea. Here along the southern border between Israel and Gaza, the fighting continues. I do want to just show you the scene behind me as we talk here. You can see a lot of activity in the ruins of the northern part of Gaza. We do understand, according to Hamas, the group in control of the Strip, that their al Qassam Brigade, the main military wing of Hamas, has been engaging Israeli forces that are currently operating in the Strip there that you see. Yesterday, we saw those Israeli tanks that were going back and forth along the border. We also have some information from the Israeli military that we can't reveal yet about the battles that took place overnight. But as that information becomes on the record, we will bring it to you later in the day. All of this comes as we are learning more about the hostages being held inside Gaza. 240 people. That does not include the four that have been released, two American citizens and two Israeli citizens. And of course, that Israeli soldier that was rescued just yesterday as part of the ongoing Israeli efforts inside the Strip. We're talking about Private Ori Megadish, who was freed from a captivity. She was originally taken on October 7th from the Nahaloz base that sits along the border with Gaza. The Israelis say she is in good condition and that she was able to meet with her family just yesterday. This does come as the Israelis say they conducted a strike against one specific commander from Hamas in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. We're talking about Nassim Abu Ajina, who directed one of the attacks against Israeli civilians on October 7th. Yet another member of Hamas that has been taken out by Israeli forces. As they do tell Fox News, the efforts are focused around trying to destroy Hamas capabilities and the leadership command inside Gaza. Guys, back to you. Hey, Trey, you did report earlier that there were high-level Israeli officials in Doha trying to work with these uh, uh, to get the hostages out. Does that have anything to do with the rescue that the IDF pulled off? So we understand there are two separate issues. The Israelis tell Fox that this was a joint effort to save this private who was captured on October 7th. And this effort had to do with the Shin Bet, Israel's intelligence service, and also the army on the ground. They were clearly acting on specific intelligence. They were able to conduct this raid and rescue the private that was being held. And we actually saw this photo of her with her family yesterday, and you could just see the relief on their faces. They had their daughter back home after yeah. so many weeks of waiting with no information whether she was alive or dead. Yeah, and, and Trey, I can tell you're being cagey about not revealing operational details, but uh, was she in a tunnel? Because if she was in a tunnel, she's going to be able to tell the IDF, okay, I was in this tunnel and I saw this stuff and this is how they operate. Yeah, I'm being very careful with the details here and I'll tell you why. This morning I met again in Tel Aviv with Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant. And we talked about this specific situation and also the battles that are taking place behind me inside the Gaza Strip. The majority of our conversation with a small group of journalists was off the record. I'm working to get some of that information on the record so I can bring it to you next hour. Okay. But very sensitive details that we're talking about, and I will effort to get them approved and, and able to bring them to you later today. Trey, Trey, you've covered a lot of wars. You've been on the ground for a lot of conflicts. Is it fair to say that the invasion has started? Yeah, this is the, the second stage of this war. It was something that was part of that conversation we, we had today, trying to get clarity on whether this is all part of an expanded raid mm -hmm. or whether or not the Israeli forces are operating inside the Gaza Strip and intend to stay there. I have information on that, but I, I just have to wait to give it to you until we can get this cleared right by Israeli censors and ensure that we're not giving away any Israeli positions. I do want to just let you know right now, my producer is telling me that sirens are sounding in Matula. Matula is in northern Israel, an indication that the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah is once again getting involved in this fight and firing on Israeli troops in the north. 
it gives you a sense of just how active the southern and northern front is in this conflict. Those Iranian proxies, not just in Gaza, but also in southern Lebanon, engaging in this fight. All right, Trey, thank you so much. Uh, he's the soldier that he's talking about was rescued is on the front cover of the New York Post. She's wearing a Marvel T-shirt. Yeah. And then there's a picture of this young lady, the 23-year-old Israeli German citizen. Her name is uh, Shani Luke, and they did confirm that she was found dead. She was at that music festival, and she... Uh, back of the truck. Yeah, you want to zoom in? Uh, yeah, she was in the back of that truck, and um, her family said, or the IDF is saying that she had been abused, and, um, and they found her severed head they tested the skull a piece of the skull and did oh. match it to her dna but her mother believes that she died that day and that she was shot in the head and she believes that she she was she took solace in that knowing that she says her mm. daughter didn't suffer how about this ainsley how about those people protesting for hamas yeah. uh and in colombia those hundred professors that signed a letter saying yeah. our people have a right to uh support hamas on our campus that that's what they did uh, what did she do wrong she went to a concert and they cut off her head so um, what what is going on with the logic of some of these people the babies their heads were cut off too yeah i know it um, in the meantime, let's talk a little more about Hamas. Uh, we were lucky enough an hour ago to have the son of one of the founders of Hamas on our program. And, and well, we were talking a little bit about how overnight, our time, they took out uh, one of these uh, commanders who was responsible for the aerial operations, mm -hmm. the drones, and also uh, the paragliders. Uh, in looking for the ultimate leader, though, where would they look? Well, the answer is under Gaza. Here he is. Listen to the son of the guy who founded Hamas. Sinwar most likely is under Al Shifa Hospital, some 30 meters in deep in the sand, which sand is very resilient uh, to bombing. It's not easy to get to him, and in order to kill him, probably we will have to uh, uh, destroy the entire hospital. But he's he's not going to hide forever. You know, we're coming after him. We are going to eradicate them. There is no escape. There is no escape. It doesn't matter. Even if he escapes Gaza, we are going after him. He later yeah. makes the point that although a lot of these commanders are beneath this hospital in the tunnels, that a lot of the organization is not even there. Right? They're not there. Standard. So the notion that we can just um, keep attacking and they just won't replace a commander with a new commander yeah. is just not going to work. And he also said, Brian uh, and Ainsley, that, um, that he doesn't see any way where the U.S. can't get involved with this because these guys are our enemies as well. And we already know that they're firing up on, on our bases you know what? as well. I, I actually, when we were interviewing him in the 6 o'clock hour and he said that, that the leader was there underneath the hospital in the tunnel mm -hmm. system, at least we know he's there and he's somewhere in that territory. He's not in another country being, you know, in yeah, a safe house the, in another country. The political wings in Doha, the military is there. Yeah. Uh, so for the most part, they're there. Uh, with a lot of cowards are trying to sneak out with the civilians, mm -hmm. I imagine. Let's bring in Cameron Hamilton, former U.S. Navy SEAL, also trained in the IDF Special Forces Unit. First off, Cameron, are you, uh, what do you, what's your, how would you characterize their land invasion. They seem to be going 100 yards at a time. They're about two miles in. Uh, they're doing it more measured than a lot of armchair generals would have thought. How do you feel about it? Hey, good morning, and thank you for having me. Unfortunately, that's a reality of what you have to engage with when it comes to urban conflict like this. Even the U.S. forces, that was as we move through different parts of Iraq, um, you know, with what you found in different, you know, urban and geographical regions, it's just difficult. There's so many threats, so many areas. When you take a building, you take a city block, you then have to keep that terrain. You have to uh, ensure that you don't have other personnel that will pop up behind you, so you have to leave deterrent forces and aerial denial tools. So it's very complicated, especially with such a densely packed city. I can say, though, that the Israelis are being very intentional and purposeful. Just because you have a mainline assault, though, that is one, you know, moving at a specific rate doesn't mean they don't have probing elements that are moving forward behind enemy lines, trying to find vulnerabilities, scouts, special operations, dogs, you name it. So there's a variety of sophisticated tools that they use 
so as to ensure that as they make this progress, they're doing so in a coherent fashion. Cameron, sure. let's talk about Iran because they have attacked, Iran's attacked U.S. military bases in the Middle East, um, more than two dozen or two dozen at this point. Iran's foreign minister is saying this, the attack on American bases in the region, especially in Iraq, is the result of wrong American policies in the region, which we hope it will correct. You reap what you sow. What do you make of that threat? Again, what we're seeing full scale on the international stage is they're testing the resolve of the American people and they're testing, most importantly, the resolve of our American government leadership. What we saw during the Trump administration, I will say to his credit, was a much stronger tone and a very clear line that you would not engage with U.S. troops without swift and brutal repercussions. Right now, we have some of the most amazing service members serving in uniform and supporting our military. Unfortunately, there's a huge amount of concern over whether the leadership of our military mm -hmm. and this current executive branch has the resolve to mitigate this threat. So I think what we need now, no one wants to see the United States get drawn into a massive conflict of the region. I think that's a terrible scenario in almost every circumstance. However, when our forces are targeted, we need swift and, and righteous rebuttals to, to those kind of actions. We need to be very ruthless and unwavering in our effort to defend U.S. service members so we're not putting them in a position of greater risk. Sure. Cameron, you know, um, the, the tunnels under Gaza have been there for years. Uh, you know, that's where uh, they would smuggle goods out of Egypt into Israel through those tunnels. But now uh, Hamas has been really good at creating what is known as the Gaza uh, Metro because there are tunnels everywhere. And we saw a moment ago, we saw that the schematics of that hospital. We know the bad guys were under the hospital. They know that the Israelis are coming for the hospital. They're eventually going to be down in the basement. How long till they skedaddle? Well, I think likely they've already moved resources and people away from that region and into other parts. We found efforts and also reports that they've been trying to smuggle hostages out of Gaza into Egypt and into other regions, even off by sea, because they know that that's where all the eyes and focus are. So if they can just bring them into another area where there isn't as much attention, then they can be potentially more successful. So they still have operations working there. They've spent a lot of their money from infrastructure, building out those tunnels, building out the technology, the phone lines, the, the uh, you know, surveillance systems that go sure. into it, bringing new air. But likely they've already probed and they've already moved three or four steps ahead into different regions, different buildings and different locations. So I will say mm. one thing that is on just how resolved these Hamas militants are. They're very calculated. They don't do things haphazardly. And they're very, very much understanding that the more outrage and the more bloodshed and the longer they drag this conflict on, the more international sympathy and placating to their efforts they'll receive. Great point. But Cameron, you, you know that the IDF, they're trained for this. And I, I think the big giveaway was um, the HR rescue that they just did. And of course, that's special operation. These are guys that have gone through multiple simulations. They've fired thousands and thousands of, of rounds. Can you talk about some of the training? Because I know you trained with them. This type of training that those operators are going through underground. Yeah, absolutely. So ultimately, we have, a, we have a, a personnel base with these different units that are highly trained, highly sophisticated. They go through sensory deprecation. They go through advanced you know, reconnaissance training. They go through urban assault training. I mean, a variety of different factors. But they also have one thing that's unique about Israel is their simulation-based training. They, they use training with actual living, breathing counterparts with less than lethal rounds, uh, but to really replicate some of the environments and scenarios that they would that they would experience. They're also incredibly methodical about capturing video footage from existing operations and then analyzing it and putting their kind of armchair quarterback in of how could have things gone differently, what could we improve on. So they're very, very, very resilient with how they actually use their after action reports so as to modify their tactics and strategies. Really remarkable. Um, and I will also say they put their, their individuals through significant degrees of stress and sleep deprecation. Uh, really astonishing so that as you become tired, as you become fatigued, your ability to reason and to kind of understand challenges becomes more difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, they inculcate their soldiers and their troops with that kind of training so as to prepare themselves for the ultimate stressors of war. Um, so really remarkable. They also, inter they also synergize really remarkably with other services, which is just, again, astonishing. 
with their canine services, with their intelligence, and even their aviation and artillery platforms. Yeah, yeah it would be great if they continue to uh, rescue hostages as they move yeah. forward. Uh, thanks so much, Cameron. Thanks, Cameron. Very impressive Thank resume, you. Cameron. Thank you for serving our country. We, we, should also, yeah, we should also give ourselves credit. We go through sleep deprivation training every day. <laughs> and, uh, we, we, and we're ready to take on Are a you tunnel. comparing yourself to a Navy SEAL? Only on sleep deprivation, IDF. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, by the way, in the control room, same thing in the camera. Everybody well,